a childhood favorite, just a little bit better. Beef stroganoff is one of those classic dishes that a lot of American-born people like myself grew up eating with their family. And if your family was anything like mine, it consisted of the onion soup mix, sour cream, throw together at the last minute type of meal. For me, there's a lot of nostalgia there and I did enjoy this dish growing up, but I wanted to revisit it as an adult and see if I couldn't enhance it a bit. So while I don't think this dish strays too much from your standard beef stroganoff, there are a couple tips in here that I throw in that I think might be helpful to you. Not necessarily just in this one, but in other dishes, just techniques in general that you can use. So as always, I'm going to talk you through my process and then we'll meet together at the end for the taste test. I like to start by prepping everything in advance so I have all my mise en place so when I'm throwing together the sauce there's not much stress and I can take it easy. Though if you want to go hardcore weeknight mode you can definitely do some of this prep while some of the stuff is cooking. That's a talent I'm still learning and I'm still working through the pressure of trying to finish everything at the right time but definitely not when I'm filming. So I'm starting with a medium to large yellow onion that I'm going to dice almost completely. I'm not going to use the entire onion for the quantity of this recipe but I am going to save the remaining piece of the onion that I don't use as well as the roots and the stems and you'll see why in a minute. I'm also going to grab 225 grams or a half pound of mushrooms. I'm using baby bella mushrooms, but you could use white or button or whatever you have. I'm taking a paper towel or you could use a brush to wipe off the surface dirt on the mushrooms. Be sure not to use water here because they'll absorb a ton of it and you'll have a hard time browning them. Once they're fairly clean, I'm going to slice off all the stems and I'm going to save them again with the roots and the stems of the onion. And then I'm just going to cut into maybe quarter inch to half inch slices. They are going to cook down and size a bit in the pan, so just be mindful of that. I'm also going to use my garlic press to press two to four cloves of garlic. I'm then going to chop up a bunch of flat leaf Italian parsley for garnish, but also to mix into the sauce. And again, I'm going to save the leftovers and the stems here. And finally, I'm going to prep my beefed up beef stock. This here is going to make one of the big differences in this dish, but I will note if you have homemade beef stock, you probably should just use that because that's always going to be the best. But if you're like me and you don't always have stock on hand, then this is your next best bet. I actually typically never have stock on hand, neither homemade nor store-bought. I opt instead to use bouillon paste or cubes because they last a lot longer in the fridge. So in this case, I'm going to start with a cup or 240 mils of cold water, and then I'm going to add in some powdered, unflavored gelatin, which is a unique ingredient. So the advantage that homemade stock usually has to store-bought stock is the quality, and that's a lot of the times due to the amount of gelatin that's inside. Gelatin is what cooks out of bones when you boil them for a long time, so that's why homemade stock tastes so good. This isn't going to be quite as good, but it's still going to be a lot better than anything you can buy at the store. I'm doing a teaspoon and a half or about 5 grams of the powdered gelatin, and I'm just going to mix that in and let it sit for a few minutes to let it go to work. You should notice that it'll start to thicken up and kind of coagulate the water that you put it in. Also while that's happening, I'm throwing in two dried shiitake mushrooms. I usually keep these in my pantry because they have a lot of good uses and they last almost forever, and since this is a mushroom dish, this is a good way to add some more flavor to it. After about 10 minutes, you should be good to transfer this to a sauce pot and start to bring it to a boil, but not before I dump in the scraps of the vegetables that we chopped and saved, the roots of the onions and the parsley and the mushrooms. Since we're going to discard these anyway, why not impart their flavors into this stock that we're making? I realize this isn't a lot of water for the amount of vegetables that we're putting in. I would honestly have gone back and added a few more cups of water and just save the stock for something else later, but we're only going to need a cup for this recipe. Anyway, once it's boiling, I'm going to strain the solids out into a bowl, where I'm then going to add my two beef bouillon cubes and break them up and dissolve them in the stock. Best practice would be to reintroduce the vegetables and let them steep over low simmer on the stove while you get the rest of the stuff ready. Either way, remember to reserve your shiitake mushrooms at this point and remove the stems and then you can slice them up like the rest of the mushrooms. So onto my beef, and here I'm going to use these really thin sirloin steaks. You could definitely opt for a more tender cut like a ribeye or a filet mignon, but that's on you if you want to spend the money. And if you wanted to use a cheaper cut like a chuck or a round, you could, but I would suggest finding a slow cooker recipe or doing at least some sort of braise. Sirloin is about as tough of a cut as I'd go with this method because anything tougher and you'd be sitting there chewing on that all night. But as you can see, the grains on the steak run this way, so we definitely have to slice it across the other way to make it more tender. And I'm making the slices about the same thickness as the thickness of the steak, so maybe a quarter to a half an inch, just so they cook more evenly throughout. We're also going to season the steak well with kosher salt and fresh ground pepper. Okay, so now that we have everything prepped and ready to go, I'm going to grab my cast iron Dutch oven. I'm going to heat that over medium high for about two to three minutes just to make everything evenly hot, and then I'm going to add in some neutral oil. The key here is definitely to sear in batches. I'm doing three batches for this little over a pound of meat. You hear it all the time that overcrowding the pan is going to bring the temperature down too much to where everything is going to steam more than sear. And here that's something you definitely want to avoid because this meat can go overcooked and tough in no time before that outside gets fully seared. So after 30 to 45 seconds, I'm going to flip these to the other side and then I'm going to repeat the process until all four sides are browned. 
Really, once you sear that first side well, you shouldn't have a problem moving these around and making sure all sides are evenly browned, but they shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. Take them off and remove them to a plate to let them rest. Repeat the process with the rest of your beef and you should have a nice fond that's developed on the bottom of the pan, which is gonna serve as a nice base for our sauce. Add in a splash more oil if needed and then we're gonna add in our diced onion and immediately go to work with our wooden spoon trying to start to scrape up the bottom with the water that comes out of the onions. Just keep everything moving. The water inside the onion should prevent anything from burning here, but just make sure you're keeping an eye on it. After maybe five minutes or so, once you have good color on the onions, you're gonna add in your minced garlic. Stir that frequently for about a minute until it becomes fragrant and then you can add in all of your mushrooms. Continue moving things around. The mushrooms are gonna release a lot of water and start to reduce in size and they'll brown as well. I'd say another three to four minutes and then we're gonna add in two tablespoons each of flour and butter. These two ingredients mix together to form a roux which serves as a base for many types of sauces and we're adding it last because it'll adhere to the bottom pretty quickly and if we add it too early it'll burn. So just dissolve the flour into the melted butter to cook off the raw flour taste and once you see it start to mat itself to the bottom of the pan you know it's time to deglaze which we're going to do with that cup of beef stock that we beefed up. As soon as you pour this in use your wooden spoon to scrape the bottom it should allow you to lift all that fond that we created off of the bottom into the sauce. And also at any time here you can add in a cup or 240 mils of white wine. If you don't want to use wine or you can't, you can also just use water or you can use a little bit more stock, but be careful because that can make it too salty. This is going to reduce itself over the course of a few minutes, but just make sure to keep stirring it so that nothing sticks to the bottom so it doesn't burn. And during that process, I had a little bit of extra fresh thyme in my fridge, so I'm throwing that in, but you don't have to, that's optional. And as always, I usually forget at least one ingredient, and here I forgot to add in a couple tablespoons of Dijon mustard. I think that's super essential to the flavor of the sauce, and I was adding this into every bowl that I had left over afterwards. But yeah, this would be a good point here to add that in. Then after a few minutes of stirring and reducing, I'm adding an essential ingredient, and that is 130 grams or a half cup of sour cream. Some people would do heavy cream instead, but I think this extra thickness and tanginess of the sour cream is essential to a beef stroganoff. Just going to stir that in and it should emulsify beautifully with the rest of the sauce. Now for final seasonings, I'm adding a few splashes of Worcestershire sauce, as well as some salt and pepper to taste, but make sure you're doing this after it's reduced just about to where you want it to be, because if you season the taste too early and it reduces a lot more, then you're going to have a more concentrated sauce and it's probably going to be over seasoned at that point. Lastly, I'm going to add in a nice handful of some of that chopped parsley. I'm going to reserve a bit for garnish, but I also like the flavor of it distributed throughout the sauce because it kind of blooms in there. And don't forget to add in your beef and stir it around and start to let that absorb the sauce as well. So while I had that sauce going, I also boiled 12 ounces or about 350 grams of wide egg noodles. Just make sure to salt your water and boil it according to package instructions. But one little thing I like to do at the end, this isn't really profound, I think a lot of people already do this, but once I strain the pasta, I pour it all back into the warm pot along with a couple tablespoons of butter and just stir that around and let it melt. That's going to stop the pasta from sticking, but it's also going to coat it all in butter which tastes amazing as you already know. And when you mix that in with the sauce, it's going to taste even better. But yeah, we're going to add all that pasta into this sauce and mix everything around until it's evenly coated. So if you don't want this much pasta, you can reduce your sauce a little bit more because you'll have less pasta to coat. But in my opinion, I like to make bigger portions with this and make it last longer. So that's why I use 12 ounces. But yeah, you're pretty much done at this point. You can garnish with the rest of that parsley on top. But yeah, this is just a beautiful meaty dish boosted by the flavors of all of those mushrooms, but also the beefed up version of the stock that we made. It's definitely one of my favorite comfort foods. I like serving it straight out of the cast iron because I think it looks cool. Just serve yourself up a plate and then we're going to get on to the taste test. So this is a dish that's probably a little more complicated than your most simple weeknight dishes, but it's by no means too complicated for you to whip together in a single night. There's not much you have to do in advance, and you can even do some of the prep while you're cooking. I just didn't do that because I was filming, and it would be a little hard for me. But yeah, I'm definitely excited to see how the enhanced beef stock comes out in this dish, and I think we built a pretty good flavor base for everything to mix together well. So let's get in here with everything in one bite. A little bit of mushroom, a little bit of pasta, and a little bit of beef. Cheers. Yep, that hits the spot. The key is definitely cooking that beef correctly because you can definitely overdo it. And I have done that in the past where I've made it super chewy and overdone. So do take your time on that and sear it in batches and make sure it's cooked evenly on every side. But yeah, that sauce is super rich and creamy. It's so perfectly emulsified with the fats and the liquids. As always, make sure you're tasting your sauces at the end to see what else you need to add because that's a really big mistake that a lot of home cooks make. Even just checking the salt level makes a huge difference. I think I'm also just partial to pasta dishes because I love pasta so much, but this is really good. Even if you don't make this exact recipe, I hope you can take some tips from the searing of the beef or the enhancing of the beef stock. Definitely try out that gelatin trick. It makes a difference and I can tell when I'm eating this, but otherwise leave any thoughts you have below. If you stuck around this long, thank you for watching. Be blessed and I'll see y'all next time.